The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought at his hand? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Jose and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there apart from curing a few sick people and laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Given the place and value of religion and faith in our Declaration of Independence, the most patriotic thing we can do is live our Catholic faith and those values for the healing of our land. That for us is patriotism. And so I ask the question, are we rebels or are we patriots? Are we rebels or are we patriots? And I was thinking about this, and so I figured I'd take St. Paul's role and speak about my weaknesses so as not to accuse anybody of anything, but just look at myself. He came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. On the Sabbath, he began to teach them, and he turned the town upside down. And I confess that he has turned the town of my heart upside down many times. How disturbing can Jesus be at times? Often because I have to repent and he shows it to me. I pray for his will in the Lord's prayer, and he disturbs me with his plan. Imagine the audacity. And rather than being humble, I rebel. The Spirit entered me, Ezekiel says, and I'm sending you to rebels who have rebelled against me. Yes, I'm a rebel hard-faced and obstinance of heart. I have those tendencies. I shrink from the truth because it's going to disturb my life. I shirk the truth because it makes people dislike me. Oh, Jesus, how you cause a disturbance in the town of my heart. Oh Jesus, how I must surrender and be humble. My heart and my soul has been his town since baptism. And there he has fed me with the finest bread from heaven and he has given me so much mercy and still I persist 
in not making him welcome in his own native place of my heart. And so the psalmist cries out, our eyes are fixed on the Lord pleading for his mercy. And there I go. Honestly, I'm not a happy rebel. In my weakness, O oh Lord, you offer grace. My grace is enough for you, you say, because I don't see the big picture. I don't see your plan behind everything, and I'm reluctant and resistant. I was recalling, as I was meditating on this, someone named Corrie Ten Boom. Anybody remember her? She survived the Holocaust. She wrote a book called The Hiding Place, an amazing read. And she speaks about how there was an infestation of lice in the barracks that she was in. And it was a woman's barracks, and all they did was complain all the time about the lice, getting angry, and she would walk around telling everybody, you should thank God for the lice. They're here by his providence. We don't know why yet. Well, when the prison camp was finally liberated, they all wondered why they were the only barracks where the women were not assaulted by the guards because they had lice. Imagine a little flea holding off the entire German army. How funny God is. How foolish I can be as a rebel. Oh, Jesus, I don't want to amaze you with my lack of faith. Rather, I want to be amazed by you. Amazed by your kingdom come and amazed by your will being done and amazed on earth as it is in heaven. Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.